What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. We're in Lake Okeechobee. I've got my new boat, my new Pro Drive. If you've checked out my frog gigging video in Louisiana, you've already seen it. But guess what? I got it modified to where now I think this is the best boat I've ever had. And I know for a fact that if you follow along with me for very long, you're going to see that this is the most versatile boat ever. Got the 8 foot power poles, got sea deck, got rod lockers, and I got my outrigger lights, Millennium seats. And today we're going to show you how to catch crappie on a jig rod. It's not like what you would do anywhere else in the country. This to me is the best place in the world to do it and it's the most fun you can possibly have. I got my dad, got Kelly Young behind the camera and let's go crappie fishing. Looks like I'm having some beginner's luck. Second crappie on the boat. He's a good size too, a little porker. All right, you guys, so we just pulled in here to what we call the maiden cane, and this is where we're going to start fishing. We've got these little jig heads, just like that, and you take these little bass assassin rubber jig bodies. I bite just a teeny bit off come right in its belly there's a flat side on them if you see right there how it's flat but here's the trick especially if you have kids or the fish are really really biting if you do this you'll go through a lot less bodies just take a little dab of super glue and run it up on there and just dab a little drop on the edge now that rubber jig body will last way longer I'm gonna try my best to show you guys how we fish this. It's really rough though, so let's get started. There actually ain't a ton of fishable spots at this exact moment. Hear Timmy laughing? He has got the funniest laugh. Oh, got one. Here? Yeah. Oh! Woo! Got one! Oh! Double up! Oh! <laughs> We're listening to Timmy. You guys, if you watched my noodling video, Timmy was in it, the tall, real tall, skinny dude. He's got the best laugh ever. Timmy, we love you. He's not far back behind us with Brad. Let me show the audience. You guys want to see what we're fishing? This is the best way for me to show you. That's how we're fishing. You stick these long rods, you pull the jig. Let me see it. These are the jigs we're using. You suck it up to the end of the rod and you literally just do this right here. You get it in there and then you drop it. Is it working though? Let's see, show them that cooler, let's it's see. It's working. We got, a, we got a lot. Sockele is what they called them in Louisiana. Oh, KP. Sockele? Sockele. So have you been happy with the Pro Drive or what? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, look, look what we're in right now. <laughs> Look at the trees I ran over. We literally run over trees to get in here. That's your second one, right? That's my fourth oh. and a half. Cause oh, one got man. away. How many you caught dad? Five. What happened? I don't know. You took my rod. So with these fish, a lot of people up north, a lot of you guys and gals that crappie fish, you got to be really, really quiet. Obviously the camera wasn't pointing at me when I caught this one, but I'm about to show you where it was when I caught it. We're parked on a big tree right here. We just came through here and I just caught that fish right there. Uh-huh. What happened? The bottom. <laughs> I will say Kelly's, I think this sport, what we're doing right now, because you got to be so patient, Kelly's actually could possibly be better at me than this for sure. She's already some up on me. 
But here in Lake Okeechobee, you don't have to be quiet. You can make all the noise you want. Why you got so many rods? Why don't we, why don't we put the shear water at? And for those of y'all that don't know, that's Brad with G3 Outfitters and about a $90,000 boat that he drives up in these trees. He might need his head checked. You're disturbing all my fish. Oh, oh gosh. Jeez. No. Don't move. Y'all are catching a big one. I just caught Kelly. Oh. <laughs> yep, that happens. No. Y'all got any six foot poles over there? For gaff? Don't even make no sense. Ow. Dang. This is the best spot. <laughs> yeah, this is the hardest spot I've pulled up into yet. Oh. <laughs> Y'all see that he landed in the boat. All right, we got to move. Yeah. We can't do nothing in this hole. Hold this, I want to show my fans the reverse on this Pro Drive. Y'all think y'all's boat's got a crazy reverse? Watch this. Hang on, Dad. Take him through here and let me see him. He's a good one. That's a beautiful Big old black male. Look at him. Hey, how about that? There you go. Oh. Got it. Megan. You guys, we turned the cameras off for about an hour because the sun was shining so bright. Now we can show you exactly what we're doing. Look oh, at this. Look at up. that. Doubled up. Doubled up big old crappie so the rods we're using are these ACC crappie sticks got these little reels I don't know what they're exactly called got 20 pound power pro to the little jig the jig really doesn't matter so this is the trick this is the trick watch what I'm doing show them the end of the rod now show them my hand I pull that jig up to the end of the rod and I stick it in this hole right here or wherever I feel like there might be a fish real slow and I drop that jig straight down there's so many weeds in there that you will get hung up quick I jig it for maybe 15 seconds grab that line pull my jig back up pull the rod back out and I just go straight to a different hole and repeat we haven't been catching very many fish in big groups we pull up to a clump catch one or two then move to the next so now we just fish the spot for two minutes or so didn't get any bites crank the motor I decided to build this pro drive I was looking for a boat that was very you know versatile something I could do anything I wanted out of and for the most part 
unless it consists of going offshore in big waves, I can do it. Ooh. Did you see how hard that one hit? Yep. That noise you hear is a stick <laughs> on the front of the boat. Oh. Show them them power poles. Those are pretty This much is one fishing type deal that I wouldn't recommend with your kids. Look at that though. Look at that. It's very, very hard. It can be very frustrating. This is not something you want to do with kids. Here in a couple weeks, I will do a video though, crappie fishing with live bait, minnows, and you can do that with your kids. Anytime we pull up to these clumps, we're looking for holes that are just a little bit bigger and a little bit more open than the rest. I see one in here though. I don't know if I can get a fish out of it. Please. See how I stick that rod in there nice and slow? Drop that jig straight down. I liked it. Just like that. I'm not sitting there up and down and up and down and I'm just ticking it. Brad with G3 Outfitters, who I just did the bass video with the other day with the kids, he does charters for these things. You come fishing with him, I promise you, you will learn a lot and you will go home with a lot of meat. Him and I are actually going. Oh, Got it. Wait. Look, look, I mean, look at, did you just see what I drug that fish out of? <laughs> if that doesn't tell you about these rods and how strong they are, nothing will. Look at that. We use this braid because you can, obviously you can see you couldn't get that fish out with anything else. Yeah, little jig, big crappie. These rods don't play around, I promise you. I'll have the link below where you can find them. We gotta keep catching. Here on Lake Okeechobee, you're allowed 25 crappie each. But to be honest with you, 10 each is more than you're gonna eat. That's a, 25 crappies a lot. Let's see if there's another one in here. Oh, did you, <laughs> he almost jerked a rod out of my hand. You'll pretty much always find that when you're fishing like this, they'll all be in the same type of area. When you're going down the line, if they're, if, oh, there you go. if they're in bull rush, they'll be all be in bull rush. If they're in maiden cane, they'll all be in maiden cane. I mean, look at that though. Pretty fish. They don't get much better. And the cool thing about crappie is they're literally everywhere in the country and they're good to eat everywhere as well. Dad, are you gonna catch one? <laughs> I'm putting a work on him. So I started out crazy slow. I was really worried about Kelly cause she had never done it. So I explained to her on the way here how to do it. Well, she came out of the gate swinging. And I sort of think I know what she's doing right now. She's stopping while she's ahead. Because <laughs> now if I say I won, she'll say, well, I quit fishing. <laughs> oh, got him. I love it when a plan comes together. Leave a comment below if you'd like to come do this with me, my dad, and Kelly. We need to have deer meat for dinner out here and have us a little fish off. Me, Aubrey, and Robert. Winner takes all. Oh, like that. Now, I was... I don't know if you saw me right then, but I was trying to do this, and that you... That ain't the right way. It's funny I said that as... My dad's slowly creeping back here in the direction of where I'm catching these fish. So last night, me, Jake, and my buddy Michael Fugue took this boat fish gigging for the first time. I only filmed a little bit of it because I was more or less doing a trial run on the boat. 
Check out the drone footage and some of these fish Jake gigged. Pick him up, you got him. Okay. He knows to pin that thing down. <laughs> Step back here, Jake. Step back here. Keep the gig in the ground. Step back here. Keep walking back here. Walk back here. Now switch hands and swing him straight up in there. Done. Jake. Yeah. Out of boy. Guys, heard, you've heard me say it in about a hundred videos that power poles are the best invention ever made. That's not joking around. You see how quick that was? Shut the motor off, drop the poles, and start fishing. How do you top that? These are the Sportsman series. The ones on my bay boat are in my air boat are blades. Yeah. These are a little bit, probably two hundred dollars each, cheaper than the blades, and work just as good but the blades for a big boat are a little bit better. What do y'all think? We got enough fish? I think we're good for a fish fry. What did you say? You wanted fish fried rice? Uh, fish fried rice, yes, fish fried rice. Fish fried rice? Fish fried rice. Sounds good. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this part of the fishing. ACC Crappie Stick, G3 Outfitters, my dad, Kelly Young, me. We're headed to the house. We'll see y'all in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are back. We're about to throw down in this kitchen like never before. We're gonna make a dish that you're definitely not gonna expect. And I'm also going to show you how to preserve fish. So we caught 75 last night. That was our limit before dark. I've got my new out, my new vacuum sealer, Outrigger Outdoors. The same guys that make my lights for my new boat that we were fishing on yesterday just came out with an awesome vacuum sealer. So I'm going to clean a couple of these fish, show you how to cook this awesome meal, and how to properly store away fish to put in the freezer so it'll be fresh forever. Now, for those of y'all that follow me, know that Danko knives have been out of stock for a while. They just got a huge shipment in of their kits. This is the 10 inch, 7 inch, and 5 inch. And I assure you with these three knives for less than 50 bucks you can do anything you need to do, period. And if you can't, well you might need to reevaluate your situation. My favorite to play with is the 7 inch. All day, every day. Come in right along their backbone, angle it forward. Come in right like here, angle it backwards. Now, if I was frying them, I would definitely be saving the tails and the backbones because that's my favorite part. Now with a crappie, there's a big chunk of meat right below the ribs. So get that knife and angle it down just like so. This flay knife cuts through them like butter. Look at her, she was ready to pop with Roe. Now one of the reasons 
Lake Okeechobee has such a massive amount of big crappie is that we harvest a lot of crappie out of that lake. They're not fighting to eat. There's plenty of room for everybody. And that lake has one of the best populations of crappie on the planet and big ones. These are pretty big, but they're not near as big as they get. You cut through the rib a little bit, don't worry. I'm gonna show you right now how to fix that. So when you mess up and you cut through the ribs a little bit, just get that knife right up underneath them and pluck them right out. No harm, no foul. Now when it comes time to skin them, lay that knife right down, just like so. And look at that. For those of y'all that eat pan fish or freshwater fish, you know that there's not a better eating fish on the planet than a crappie. Sockele, white perch, whatever you want to call them, they don't get no better. All right, let's get this party started. Not that much butter. Got a cup of onion. A cup of mushroom. Two cups of zucchini. None of this has to be exact by any means. Got a cup of broccoli. You wondering what we're making yet? I ain't even telling you yet. I got my cast iron skillet pretty hot. I don't want this to like get all mushy. I'd rather cook it hot and fast than low and slow. Now I want to add a little, check this thing out Kelly got, a little spritzer of olive oil. Like if you're grilling, this is awesome because you can put them on there and squirt and you're only getting olive oil right on the food that you want to spray, not all over everything. Stir it up. Turn your heat back up from that initial blast. Do some pepper and some salt. I'm not going too heavy with seasonings because we're going to put a special seasoning on right at the end. This is one of those things you need to stand over and make sure it doesn't burn and make sure it doesn't get too cool while it's cooking because it will get real mushy. All right, while that's cooking, let's cook some fish. I'm gonna go real, real light on the seasonings. Crappie, sockele, white perch, it's such a white, flaky, pure, good eating fish that you don't need to over season it. You're not trying to hide anything, you're not trying to cover anything up. It's just an excellent, excellent eating fish. I don't even know what this is. Kelly came home with a, something. Garlic seasoning and all. Got a little bit of butter, a little bit of olive oil. My big pan's taking up right now with rice. We will be done soon though, and you're gonna be very surprised. All right, we've been on there about a minute. We need to flip them. Look at that, just a little golden crunch. Oh! You got this. You know what I need to do? Uh, I don't even know why I'm playing around, y'all. I got the best fans in the world. My last video, they broke. Guess what? They emailed me, asked me my address, and sent me not one, but two pairs. Here comes the magic. A lot of y'all right now are scratching your head thinking, what is Gabe doing? Here comes the magic. I know a bunch of y'all are thinking, 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 thinking. But what are you thinking? Turn the heat off on this because they're pretty much done. Y'all check out these tongs right here. Look at that. I'm sure this chef wizard has wondered why such a peak of sales lately. I have zero affiliation with them, but I wish I did because I guarantee I've sold a couple thousand pairs of them. Now Kelly is the reasoning behind this dish. She loves eating this style of food. What you know about that, we're just gonna stir it all in. I'm sure some of y'all were thinking, I knew it, I knew it. How about this though? What y'all know about that? We need a little bit more. But does it look good, Kelly? Starving. It looks so good. Little homemade crappie fried rice. 
Now here's the funny thing. Y'all were probably thinking I was going to lay out this beautiful dish. No, we're going to do it like you should do it. Especially if you're at deer camp, fishing camp, and you got a bunch of people that are hungry right now. This is how you do it. Chop that fish up. Start stirring it in. Now you got your protein, your vegetables, your rice. Hey, you're going to lose weight and feel good. Maybe not lose weight. I don't know where I was going with that. But. Crappie fried rice. Not crappy fried. Crappie fried. <laughs> to finish it off, we got this really healthy soy sauce that Kelly found. Just a little bit. Ooh, some yum sauce. That's all you need. Look at that though. The smells are amazing. But y'all were wondering about the seasonings at the end? Check out this. Yep, that says seaweed on there. I don't know why Kelly likes eating seaweed, but we do, so sprinkle some of this on top. I know some of y'all right now are wishing you could come to this camera and lick this pan. <laughs> I feel hot. Check this out though. Check that out. But can y'all smell that? God, that smells good. The taste test of my favorite meal ever. Mmm, so good. I, can't I can zoom live in off and of out this. like you do really well. I can live off of fried rice. Like healthy fried rice like this? Oh my gosh. So it's good? It's so good. Redneck, did you want some? Redneck wants some. But we do have a piece of fish here that's just plain. I think it's just a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. I've never had crappie. Crappie? Crappie? So this is my first time just having it plain without anything. Mmm, I'm about to go catch me some more. This is really good. Really flaky and white. Good flavor, no fishy flavor whatsoever. I love it. What do you say before we finish eating, we show them how to put up some fish? Yes, and we should show them the Christmas tree you picked out. Well, uh... it's, it's a little stumpy for the ceiling, but it's okay. <laughs> All right, so if you notice me zooming in on her, what you don't know is her little fingers, that camera she's holding zooms in and zooms out. She's not sticking the camera like that. And when I'm filming, I try to do it, and my stubby, rough, working hands, it's like, right. That's why we were doing that. Here's step one of making your fish last as long as possible, is get it bone dry. Wrap it up in some paper towels. If you're a kid, your mom's probably gonna be mad that you used up all of her paper towels, but say, mom, it's for the better good. Here's the really cool thing about this scale. And I'm gonna show you, cause Kelly, believe it or not, I might need to put up one of your pictures of her. She used to be at work like a, a what? <laughs> bodybuilder. A bodybuilder. She was a bodybuilder, built like a brick house. So she was always weighing her fish or her chicken or whatever she was that she was eating. And this new scale, look at that. 72.6 grams, 159, 245, 333, 407, 47, 47.29, 472.9 grams of healthy fish. You could weigh carrots or whatever else you're wanting to do. One of the coolest things about a vacuum sealer, in my opinion, is you can also do marinades. If you're going to do some like deer meat backstrap or a meat that doesn't have the best flavor and you're wanting to inject some flavor, put it in a vacuum sealer. Put a little bit of the marinade, do it just right, and it'll just suck those juices right down into there. Now when I'm storing fish, there's five of us in our little family, so I like to put five flays because I know we're going to at least eat that much and sometimes I'll even put six in case somebody gets hungry. If you lay it in there nice and neat, this vacuum sealer will be able to do its actual job.
Look at that. Done. That fish right there will last a lot longer than you can imagine. And you can do chicken, deer, meat, anything. Anything you would put in a Ziploc, you can do in here. The coolest thing about this, some of y'all right now are gonna be like, oh, you're trying to do a sales pitch. No, I'm trying to help you guys out because you guys ask me a ton of questions on what we use. Outrigger Outdoors, I'll have the link in the description below. If you use my promo code, you'll even save more money. This is an awesome Christmas gift. It's just an awesome gift for your mom, your grandma, yourself, whoever you are. Buy it, I use it, I love it. Now let me try this real quick. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Some chopsticks, I feel like, mmm. I think I like it better like this than I would with chicken. Mmm, mmm. I still got a couple more flays. I'll vacuum seal these up. Tomorrow we're going back to Crystal River, me and G3 Outfitters. And KC, the boy I did the snipe hunting video with last year. Timmy and Richard, who we did the noodle loom video with. And we're going to come back with so much fish, it's insane. You can rest assured, I'm going to fill the freezer full of vacuum sealed fish. But right now, like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here. Show them the painting of Redneck. I just saw that. Oh, yes. Look at this. My neighbor, right next door, that's painted. The catfish video I did in South Carolina, I took this picture. And she loves redneck. She goes, do you have a good picture of him? And she hand painted that. That's amazing. Back to the exit. Like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape.